Good evening and happy Eclipse Day. This regular meeting of April 8th, 2024 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Bradley? Here. Hamill? Here. Jacob Itzkazire? Here. Jones? Here. Parks? Here. Sancy? Here. Whitman? Here. Right, we're happy to welcome some students to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Hi, my name is Mila, and I am in grade five. Hi, my name is Kaden, and I am grade one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rain, and I'm in fourth grade, and I'm gonna give, gonna give a shout out to my big sister, Abriella. <laughs> my name is Adrian, and I'm in second grade. My name is Kamal, and I'm in third grade. My name is Lydia, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Kaden, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Jason, and I'm in fifth grade. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Great job. Thank you. I move the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. And moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on March 18th, the work session on March 18th, and the special meetings on April 1, 2024, as submitted. Second been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the regular meeting on March 18th, the work session on March 18th, and the special meeting on April 1st, 2024, as submitted. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay. I believe there are a few board salutes around the table. I have one. Uh, board salute goes to the Foundation for Dubuque Public Schools and its many supporters for a tremendously successful uh, Enhancing Excellence fundraising event that was held in March 20. District students and staff were present to highlight the amazing foundation supported work happening all across the district and the impact of the foundation funds on student success. We extend congratulations to the evening's award recipients. Doug Horseman received the Outstanding Hometown Alumni Award. Debbie Butler received the inaugural Friends of Dubuque Public Schools Award. And students Sanvi Ram and Jillian Myers, both juniors at Hempstead High School, they received the inaugural Young Philanthropist Award. Overall, the event exceeded its goal of raising $100,000 for the foundation and ensuring continued positive impact on students and staff in the Dubuque Community School District. Kudos to all involved. Awesome. Great event. It was a great event. Mm -hmm. Is there another salute? I have one. I'd be delighted to, to share. We'd like to, the board would like to extend congratulations to the district's high school robotics team, mm -hmm. whose name is Servo Strikes Back. <laughs> they have received the Engineering Inspiration Award at the Greater Kansas City Regional Robotics Competition, which was held from April 3rd through the 6th. The award celebrates outstanding success in advancing respect and appreciation for engineering. Team earned the award by writing a children's book titled Susie Wants to Be an Engineer. <laughs> and that inspires kids to join STEM. STEM uh, is science, technology, engineering, and math. We put that together and call it STEM. The team also highlighted its efforts going into the schools to host STEM sessions and creating STEM activities and lesson plans for each fifth grade classroom that will be used in all of our elementary schools. 
This award recognition qualifies the team to attend the International First Championship in Houston, Texas from April 17th to 20th. Interesting, registration fees are paid by NASA. That's pretty cool. So we say congratulations to all involved with the team, the students, the advisors, the mentors who, are, who come to us from our community partners, all of those folks are necessary to make something like this happen. So on this success, we, we celebrate and we wish that team very best of luck and, and good wishes at the world competition that they'll be attending. How cool is that? It's great. World competition. Yeah, we're really excited too to have a partnership um, with John Deere, yeah. the Foundation of Public Schools, that's going to help fund that trip for them to go to the to the competition. Um, they found out Sunday, that was yesterday, that they qualified. So today, Joe Maloney found him a charter bus, and we're going. So awesome. yeah, so we're good, and that's a, a one week away. So not oh, a lot boy. of turnaround wow. time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a quick one. Yeah, so we're excited about them. That's a good attending. case of it takes a village. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of uh, taking a village, you know, I do want to thank, you know, the building staff here, community members um, who've all wrapped their just energy around Prescott Elementary these last few days. We had one of our very own students who um, is no longer with us. And I know a lot of um, just teachers and staff are just going through a lot of time and you know, our condolence to the family. But just so many people are just wrapping their arms around Prescott. And so it does remind me that it does take a community for everything that we do. So thank you and the team and the community, who, again, who are wrapping their arms and treasures around Prescott Elementary right now. Thank you. Is there any other board salutes to mention? Always so much great work happening in our district. Uh, next on our agenda is a public hearing on the proposed budget estimate for fiscal year 2024-2025. And I believe we start with uh, Mr. Kelleher giving us a review of the certified budget proposal. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Hawkins. Tonight I'm going to start out with a little different presentation. Um, I showed this at the Facility Support Services meeting, but I wanted to share with the public what the new um, publication of levy rates requirements are based on the law from last year, how it changed moving forward. So if Kobe, would you mind please bringing up that timeline? So the new timeline we're going to talk a little bit about. Across the top are dates specific when things are required. Um, so it starts out with the governor's initial proposal right at the beginning of January. The next step is for the legislature then to set SSA, and that's state supplemental aid. And what that is is a percentage, and it increases our district cost per pupil by whatever percentage they approve. Um, that is essential or a big piece of our levy rate. So in order for them, they have to do that in order for us to provide a levy rate. Well, this, and I'll go back here, everything in yellow on this tab or sheet is new. Those are the new requirements that the law uh, incorporated from the old law. So you see right at the beginning, that first yellow line, it says published levy rate first time. So there's two publications of the levy rate now required, as well as two hearings. So this first publication is due by March 15th. And I will tell you, SSA, if you look down lower, was not set until almost March 26th. So what does that, how does that affect us? Well, with the publications, we have to publish, publish a rate that we believe it will be, but once we publish that first rate, we can never make it higher. We can only lower it. So without using SSA, our team had to develop what we think was probably going to be the most potential highest rate. And that's what we published at that particular time on March 15th. So what happens is the Department of Management takes that levy rate, incorporates it with the city and the county, and then they send out, the county auditor then sends out a levy rate to all the taxpayers showing all the different uh, municipalities, what the cities, what's the counties, and what the school districts are. 
So we complied with all of that. And you can see um, on the, the table, once we've set that in, we have to have that first hearing. And by law, we have to give 10 to 20 days notice to the public. So we had set that date for April 1st for that hearing. So that meant our range in publishing in, in the paper was from March 12th to March 22nd. Again, SSA had not been set by that point in time. So now we'll jack, drop down to the next line, and that's to publish the uh, budget and levy rate according to the old rules. So this is our second um, publication of levy rates. Again, SSA is not known. So we, as a team, had to develop our budget based on what we thought. We estimated 3%. That's what we thought it would be at that time. And we also developed this document, as we do each year, and we have to do it early, so it's a time for the facilities meeting, so we estimated 3%. So that's what we did. And that yields a levy rate of just a little over $13, okay? So now SSA comes along and is finally set by our legislators. The governor signs it. So the next yellow piece is the actual hearing that we had on that initial March 15th publication of levy rate. We have to have a hearing, that's the first one, showing, you know, asking the community if they want to provide feedback on that initial levy rate. Remember, it's only the levy rate, it's not the budget that you're approving back here. It's just a, the levy rate. So now let's jump down to the next nine, and now we're back into what we normally do, and that's tonight's public hearing on both the budget and the levy rate. So we'll be approving both tonight. So that's kind of a history in the changes. And unfortunately, when the legislature doesn't do SSA in a timely manner, it really does affect what we can provide to the public for an accurate levy rate. We have to make guesstimates as to what we think it will be because they haven't set that rate for us yet. So that's the unfortunate piece of that part. So now let's talk about the budget and the levy rate for this school year. And again, we estimated on 3%. So we'll release this book probably tomorrow on the website. But it goes through a lot of facts and figures on how we determine the levy rate, what is authorized uh, spending authority, and that's only for the general fund because the budget you're approving tonight is all funds. So there's about seven different funds that are all included together, both revenue expenses that you'll be uh, approving. So the first piece of this I wanted to go over with is kind of a, a there's some charts and graphs in here, but we're not going to do them all. So we're just going to pick a few. And I'd like to choose first certified enrollment, kind of to show the community as well as the board. Here's our 10-year history on certified enrollment. And you can see it's been declining over the last 10 years to the tune of about 600 students. What makes it hard for us as a district is that's average about 60 students per year. We have 18 buildings. That's three, three and a half students per building. And how many grades do we have? Four, three, six. So that's not even one kid per grade level in a lot of those buildings. So it's hard to make um, adjustments in our spending when it's only declining at maybe one kid or two kids per building each year. It makes it challenging for us. So now let's go to the next chart, which is showing our state supplemental aid. And again, this is an increase in the district cost per pupil amount. Um, and as you can see back, it's a 15-year history back in the good times. Um, 15 years ago, we had a pretty steady rate of 4%. Then it got uh, very volatile. It's gone down to zero, popped back up to two, two again, then four. So you can see it's quite fluid. Um, and this one is showing again because we did it at three. 3%, it's actually lower than that. It's just going to be at 25 So again, a lot of volatility in this, which again makes uh, challenging for us to work on our expenses and keeping them uh, in line with what we're spending. Um, the next graph, please. This is a chart of our levy rate over the last 15 years goes back to almost $17 um, per thousand. And you can see that has declined significantly since then, 
gone up a little bit when we probably had that 4% SSA would be my guess, that kind of timed in with that. And then it's gone down, gone down. And then last year it went up because we were planning on really hopefully getting our geo bond to pass. And then that levy rate would have carried forward long into the future at that 1451 rate. Because the bond didn't pass, um, and that bond levy piece was about a dollar fifty on the levy rate. So you can see, obviously, since it didn't happen, we've declined the levy rate by that dollar fifty, which would have been assigned to that uh, previous levy rate. That's how we said we had some flexibility back then, how we could keep it at fourteen fifty one, because we knew these other couple other levies were going to go down a little, couple other different pieces of the levy were going to go down, and that's what you see is happening for this year. Um, next page, Kobe. So this is a comparison of our district with the other urban education network schools in Iowa. So it's the other big city schools in the state of Iowa. And you can see our levy rate proposal compared to the other districts. And where I got those other districts was from that March 15th um, publication amount. So all those districts had to do it just like we did. So I took that. Now, those are probably going to be high, just like ours was a little higher. But we still are at the bottom um, of the total levy rate. And that's the first time I've seen that since I've been here, that we've been at the bottom of the UEN levy rates. Next page. So this is the actual document that was published in the paper showing um, our revenue and our expenditures, including all those funds. Um, and that's what we're asking you to approve tonight. And below on the bottom page, or the bottom of that document is the levy rate that supports um, the funding for several of these funds within the, the budget. And the last page I want to show is the effective rate on residential property. So we have a comparison of this year to last year, and there's quite a bit of variables, differences happening. And it was all everyone was hearing about, all the assessed values were going up, and they did average about 1.23, you know, 23% um, increase on your assessed values, going from one year to the next. And this chart is the average piece of property, the assessed value of an average piece of property in our community. Um, so the first step was the equalization order. So that raised assessed value from last year. Then comes the rollback number. And what they do is they take that rollback percentage times your assessed value to come up with your taxable value. So as you see, the rollback number for this year declined significantly, about 8%. And, and you can also tell by the table, the calculation, how does that affect your taxable value? Well, you see last year's average house was at 87,169. It only jumped to 91,067. It jump, didn't jump 23% because of the rollback piece. So in the end, if we take our levy rate last year compared to this year, um, you see the total tax rate on that average piece of property, and they're actually going to pay $80.65 less for school property taxes than they did last year. Okay. I went pretty quick through that. Do any of you have any questions on that? And I know we went through it at Facility Support Service pretty in-depth, so... And, and in that chart, there's also one for um, commercial property and industrial property. So if you want to look at that, you'll have to pull up this book. And Kevin, just to be clear for the public, that the last table you showed with the, the rate, that's based on 3%, which is higher than what it will actually yeah, be. We actually received 25 So my expectation is the $13 will go down very slightly. Okay. And behind the scenes, just in case someone is thinking, well, you guys potentially wasting money, figure out how to cut the fat. There's a lot of things behind the scenes and publicly we have been discussing mm -hmm. to try to be efficient as an organization, correct? Correct. Okay. 
Yes. We've had to reduce our expenses for several years in a row because of the, the reduced funding that we're receiving coupled with the declining enrollment. Those two factors are re requiring us to reduce our spending. And I think one other piece that I wanted to mention is in that residential piece, the district has no input on the equalization order or that uh, rollback number. That is all done at the state level. That is, the district has no input into those calculations. So again, Kevin, the, the, the uh, rate has gone down because of two factors? Declining enrollment. enrollment and low SSA and lower, lower state, state funding. Correct. Which has been happening for 12 years. It looks like from yeah. year one. Yes. That's why you saw the decline in levy rates. Over 12, if we go back 12 years, yeah. that's when the volatility started in the levy rate, meaning it was going down. It wasn't going up. Right. So we're at thirteen dollars now. 15 years ago, we were at $17. Any other questions for Kevin? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. I move that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the budget estimate and authorize payment of the legal notice publication cost to the Telegraph Herald. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the budget estimate and authorize payment of the legal notice publication costs to the Telegraph Herald. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, now there's an opportunity for any public comments that are specifically related to the budget estimate, not for any other issue. So if you have a comment, if you could come to the microphone, state your name and connection to the district, and we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes using the timer that we've provided. Uh, thank you. My name is uh, Clark Slows, 2925 Burlington Street, and do appreciate the effort to you know get the levy lowered, and I do sympathize that you're kind of stuck with the legislature kind of hamstringing you on giving you information in a timely manner. It's a shame that they don't follow the law in getting you that information in a timely manner. Maybe we all need to speak to our state senators and representatives and ask them, why should we vote for you if you're not going to follow the law? We expect the average citizen to follow the laws. Why shouldn't our representatives follow the law? Uh, the one thing I'm kind of disappointed in is the process. Um, when I, I came to the uh, the levy rate hearing last week, and you know there was public input, but it was kind of interesting because there was a couple in front of me, and I heard them say, you know, it's not going to do any good, and they said basically it's just to make us feel better to have public input. It's not going to make a difference. And then someone also asked, can we ask questions? And the answer was no. It was just for public input. If there are questions, you know, what was stated, if there are questions that we felt needed to be answered, we'd do it in another meeting. No indication of when or who was going to answer that. Um, and it was pointed out it was going to be discussed at the facilities meeting. And again, it was stated generally, there's no public input at those meetings. And I did want to ask some questions, but since there was going to be really no answers to those questions, I left, but then I found out you did open it up for public input at the facilities meeting. That wasn't mentioned at the start of the facilities meeting. That would have been nice to know. And I went searching on the website for information, and it was kind of like I call it hide and go seek to try and find <laughs> the information. Um, there's a, you have to search. You, you look for documents. There's a section called documents. Okay, you think budget documents would be there. They're documents. They weren't. So you had to hunt around and find financial responsibility to find that. Um, the document you're going to vote on tonight, I find that information useful, but there is no draft that you could look at beforehand, which would be nice. Um, the notice for the levy rate hearing, 
it had some interesting numbers there, like one area went down $6 million, while another area went up $4 million. I would have liked to ask the question, why? And get an answer to that. Um, like I say, it seems to me that the method of trying to get information beyond what's the broad general stuff that you see published in the paper is a hunt, a hunt and hide and go seek method. It needs to change and be better next year. Thank you. Seeing no other uh, people who would like to make a comment, I move that the Board of Education adopt the budget estimate for fiscal 2024-2025 as published. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the budget estimate for fiscal year 2024-2025 as published. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open form. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, to start off our visitors in open forum, I believe we're going to have a report from Andy Peterson, not Andy Peterson, <laughs> from Andy Peterson. Yeah, sorry. Um, talking about what Andy Ferguson, is, Andy there Ferguson too. <laughs> is right by Andy Peterson. So you tripped me up. Um, but we're excited to hear what's going well at Carver. Absolutely. And thank you for bringing your students. Absolutely. Thanks for welcoming them tonight. Um, those students were selected from our March um, Carver Cougar Award winners. We have an assembly each month, and those students were all selected as, an, a winner, as a winner. So it was easy to pick them to bring tonight. They did a great job. What's going well at Carver Elementary? Um, I have two goals that we had this year that I want to share a little bit about, both focused on the optimal learning environment. One thing that we've been focusing on is the ratio of positive statements to corrective statements in the classroom, and we want to be at a four, a four to one ratio. We have run two um, sets of instructional rounds this year, one with our teachers from our BLT and one with a principal group that came and helped me out, and we have found that in both cases we were at that 80% four to one ratio of positive to corrective statements in the classroom. So that's a big win for us. We're going to do that one more time before the end of the year, but something that we continue to focus on. Um, we are going to be rolling out our positive office um, referral tomorrow, actually. We're meeting with students. We're going to do live announcements tomorrow and talk about that. As I shared, we have our monthly awards assembly. This is another way for teachers to recognize students who are doing great things around the building. I'm going to focus on the areas of responsibility, um, respect, and safety. Teachers can simply write a quick description. They'll bring the form down to the office. The office folks, whoever's there, will celebrate them. Um, we're going to give them a sticker so that everyone will know that they won and people around the building can talk with them too and reinforce those good choices that they made. So that will start tomorrow and we're really excited about that. One thing that we've started at Carver since the last time I was here is the Golden Peanut Award. And at our monthly assembly, um, our fifth grade leadership team is coordinating this with our counselor, Mrs. Hunold. All students in the building are given a vote each month of what teacher they think ought to receive the Golden Peanut Award. And then one teacher is recognized at the assembly um, each month. That has been a great thing for a little bit of student voice. Teachers have uh, really enjoyed that as well. Um, so just one thing I wanted to share with you. I heard a little bit of conversation about robotics earlier. Um, Carver had a very successful Lego League team um, this year, coached by Donna Schmidt. Um, our Carver Micro Cougars Lego League team got first place at the state competition in Ames um, for their innovation project on micro bits. They actually authored a book um, and put that together. It's in our library now, and they're trying to get it in the libraries of all the other elementary schools in Dubuque. So a really authentic project. Um, in order to do that project, um, that team met with author Jeannie Snook Anderson, who is a former DCSD teacher, um, to kind of talk about the writing process and how they would go about putting that book together. She also visited our entire student body um, just last week and presented her book, Amelia Amelia's teacher, the Nita Snook Southern story. Um, Jeannie's grand, might be great-great-grandmother, was Amelia Earhart's teacher. 
Um, so a really cool story. She talked a little bit about her inspiration, um, how it took a little bit of poking and prodding to get that out of her from her friends, and just talked about students being able to do the things that they enjoy, and she found, had found something that she really came to enjoy. We also had another author visit um, earlier in March. Kurt Wagner of Bellevue, Iowa, came and presented his Anthony's Adventure series to our first and third graders. Those are just a few of the good things that are happening at Carver right now. Thanks, Andy. You Thank bet. you so much. Appreciate you being here. Okay, anyone else who wishes to address the board can do so at this time. Same setup as last time. Please state your full name, your connection to the district, and limit your remarks uh, using our handy timer. All right, seeing no one, I move that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve those items listed on the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve items listed in the consent agenda. I believe we're pulling the personnel yep. report. Yeah, I'd like to um, pull the personnel report and have Brian Cool come up and just explain um, one piece that's in there to, this evening. So thanks, Mr. Cool. Good evening. Uh, with the reduction of some of our teacher leader positions, we had a staff member that decided to retire. Uh, it's outside of our normal date for retirement incentive. <laughs> Uh, with the change in TLG staffing, I ask that you allow me to bring forward one more person for consideration. Uh, this allows us to still pay this incentive out of our management fund. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So we'll be removing that, not taking action on that tonight, correct? Or we or it would be part of the consent. Yeah, it'll be part, part of the consent agenda. Part of this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. It'll be part of the consent agenda. Okay. We just wanted to make you aware of that, that it was in the personnel report, mm -hmm. just because it wasn't following our normal um, practice or policy. Yep. But we also wanted to give that individual that's worked for us for a long time um, the benefits of retirement. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Brian. Okay. All in favor of the items in the consent agenda? Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, so we are now at the Facilities and Support Services Committee <laughs> update with, I see a lot yes, of motions, lot. Ms. Whitman, so take it away. Okay, um, our meeting was held April 1 here at the forum at four o'clock. I did want to clarify a little, we do welcome public input, we're not able to have a back and forth conversation at those committee meetings, nor are we here. But we do like to hear your questions, and when we get those questions, we will jot them down and make sure an employee or someone from the district that is involved in that area does get back to you. So at that time, you can have conversations. But I'm sorry that it's not able to happen during those meetings or this one. Okay. Purchase professional service contracts. We reviewed one with Flores College for the multimedia services and one from Data Vision, um, Vision Primary Storage Area Network. Um, also, Kevin Kelleher gave the presentation to us. That's why we have heard this presentation before and we had lots of questions for Kevin at that time. So um, thank you for that presentation again, Kevin, and um, it always helps to hear it one more time. <laughs> Um, update on district projects. Senior high school is, um, Ken told us, 97.2% complete. Work on the project is on schedule, and the bulk of the work to be completed prior to the start of the 24-25 school year. Um, Sageville Elementary School solar project, the construction is complete and the system is turned on and producing energy. So we're excited to hear the first updates on how much savings we're, we're seeing from the solar project. Lincoln Elementary Outdoor Wellness Project, the project is to start as soon as school gets out and should, um, it should take all summer to complete, but they will get it done as soon as possible. They have to wait till all the students are gone because it's a pretty extensive update. 
Dalesell Field scoreboard replacement, um, substantial completion walkthrough took place on March 6. Um, preschool renovation project, site work has started. The project is approximately 42% complete. The equipment, furniture, and fixtures will go out to bid on April 18th, and work should be completed by the beginning of August to welcome our new preschoolers in that building. Audubon Playground replacement. Parts and pieces are ordered and should be here the last week of May with work to be completed um, by the time the Summer Academy starts in July, meeting the summer school for the Audubon students. Um, Eisenhower Elementary Gym Edition. We um, reviewed the architect agreement with Origin Design. Same with um, Irving. And, that, and I'm sorry, Eisenhower is for the multi-purpose edition, the gym space. And Irving Elementary Mechanical Updates. So we listened to the presentation from Origin Design on both of those. Um, Reviewed the Association of School Business Officials International Certificate of Elegant, e Excellence. Kevin Kelleher shared with the committee that the district re received the Certificate of Elegance, ex Excellence Award for the annual um, comprehensive financial report for June of 2023. This is the 15th year in a row to receive this recognition. Thank you to Kevin and his team for, all, for the great reports all these years. Update on the middle school consolidation. Superintendent Hawkins told the committee that the district is currently looking into finances for the rest of the school year and looking at efficiencies for next year. Superintendent Hawkins said that the district will restructure the school teacher leadership and professional development programs in order to save $2 million in operating funds. Buildings will focus on ways to continue that work. Superintendent Hawkins stated that they plan to on um, looking at other cost reductions while going through the annual staff staffing review process. And I do have several recommendations. I'll start reading those. I move the Board of Education approve the executed construction contract bonds and certificate of insurance with Wilson Restaurant Supply Incorporated for the preschool kitchen equipment project in the amount of 129,841 cents. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the executed construction contract bonds and certificate of, certificate of insurance with Wilson Restaurant Supply Incorporated for the preschool kitchen equipment project in the amount of $129,800.41. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve change order number 14 to Tricon Construction Company on the Senior High School Renovation Phase 2 project in the increased amount of $143,408.26. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number 14 to Tricon Construction Company on the Senior High School Renovation Phase 2 project in the increased amount of $143,408.26. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve change order number one, Ardent Lighting Company on the Dalesell Field video board replacement project and the decreased amount of $5,447.55. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number one, Ardent Lighting Company on the Dalzell Field video board replacement project in the decreased amount of $5,447.55. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve change order number one to Sheets Design Building LLC on the preschool renovation project in the increased amount of $123,315. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number one to Sheets Design Build LLC on the preschool renovation project in the increased amount of $123,315. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve change order number two to Sheets Design Building LLC on the preschool renovation project in the increased amount of 99409 Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number two to Sheets Design Build LLC on the preschool renovation project in the increased amount of $99,409. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the agreement with Origin Design Company for the Eisenhower Elementary School Gymnasium Edition project in the amount of 440000 Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Origin Design Company for the Eisenhower Elementary School Gymnasium Edition project in the amount of $440,000. Is there any discussion? I personally would just like to add, I want to thank Andy for being here this evening, um, but just as a reminder to the community that this was a project that was originally on the bond referendum that we know um, with the size of the building, the, the need for this addition, and so um, we are going to use the one cent sales tax dollars for that project moving forward. So just wanted to make a reminder for that as we move forward. So thanks. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move the Board of Education approve the agreement with Origin Design Company for the Irving Elementary School Mechanical Upgrades Project in the amount of 441000 Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the agreement with Origin Design Company for the Irving Elementary School Mechanical Upgrades Project in the amount of $441,000. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to remind the public again that <laughs> this was another project that was part of the bond referendum and with the um, the aging um, boiler and things that we had and hard to get replacement parts, we decided to move forward and again use the one cent sales tax dollars um, to start this project as well. So thanks. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, I have one more recommendation. I move the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the quarterly budget report. Mr. Kelleher, are you coming to talk to us again? I see that you are. One more time. <laughs> so in the, uh, the budget quarterly budgets are shown in the back of your packet, and I'm specifically referring to page 101 for tonight's uh, comments. Um, there's really three things I want to address. One is the general fund expenditures when you look at the budget balance. So what I do is I look at the expenditures year to date and the encumbrances, and I'm probably jinxing this because this is the second quarter in a row. I'm going to say they are coming in currently at a lower amount than what we have projected for the full year. So hopefully that trend will continue and we'll end up not having such a large decrease in our unspent balance. So everybody, knock on some wood. I have the gavel right there. Of course, our spring spending increases, trends upwards, but hopefully we'll still have enough cushion there to end up in the good. Um, sales tax expenditures. If you look at the, the budget balance, you see it's a minus $800,000 as of right now. Reason for that is included in that is the full senior um, contract. So we're probably going to spend between a million and a two million dollars next fiscal year. So if you factor that in, we would probably have a positive budget balance. That's what's bringing that down. Same with the Pebble expenditures. If you add the expenditures and the encumbrances together, it shows a $1.7 million over expenditure compared to budget. Two big reasons there. One is it includes a FY22-23 purchase as an expenditure in this year. So our buses came in late after the end of the fiscal year. We paid for them this year, so they're expensed in this year's budget, even though they weren't accounted for in this year's budget, they were in last year's. So that's driving up the expenditure amount. And then also included are in the encumbrances are the two playground projects, which are about a million dollars when you add the two together. Those will take place over the summer, 
probably not be paid in this fiscal year, but the whole project is included in the encumbrance amount you see tonight. Mm -hmm. So those are explanations for those deficit amounts. Any questions for me? All right, thank you. I promise not to come up anymore. <laughs> okay. All right, all those in favor of approving the quarterly budget report, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, as folks can see um, from our meeting tonight, school finances are extremely complicated and very, very important to our success and the success of our students. Look at that. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of the board that we are very fortunate to have an excellent team of people who who um, are working on our finances, and we were not at all surprised to learn that we once again as a district um, earned the ASBO International Certificate of Excellence, and it's my pleasure to present that to Rick Till. <laughs> Come on in, Rick. <laughs> Our business office team is second to none, and we don't take for granted what we have in that group of people and the work that they do, so just wonderful. Much respect for all that you yeah. do. All right, well, thank you for that report, Ms. Whitman, and that brings us to the Educational Programs and Policy Report from Ms. Jones. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, we heard from Mike Size, our chief communications officer for the district. He updated us um, on community partnerships and the collaborative efforts between the district and local organizations. These partnerships help to enhance learning, help with workforce preparation, community engagement, and resource sharing. Uh, Mr. Size also shared a list of the community partners that we currently have and all the businesses and groups. And I know I was shocked by, I think there was at least two pages of different partnerships that we currently have. And both as a board member and a citizen, I'm sure I can say for everyone, I feel grateful to live in a community that really gives back and where so many businesses and groups value public education and the future of our kiddos. So feeling grateful from that report um, moving forward. Our goal is to look for opportunities to enhance and broaden the current relationships we have and also welcome new relationships with other businesses that uh, kind of spread the word. Uh, then we heard from, or we reviewed several policies, none probably more important, or some would say, um, than the number 5106, which will excuse the graduating seniors from having to make up snow days this year. So we'll be bringing that forward to approve. And um, reviewed several other policies, um, mostly to do with transportation. So I have one recommendation for the board. Uh, I move that the Board of Education excuse seniors from making up canceled school days. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education excuse seniors from making up canceled school days. Is there any discussion? What do you think? Should we do it, board? <laughs> <laughs> this is a hot topic. Hot so topic. I, yeah. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? You can't oppose that one. <laughs> Uh, that motion approves, or is approved. So thank you very much, Ms. Jones, for that update. Our next meeting is, I don't know, in May, first Wednesday in May, right? All right, so that brings us to new business. And tonight we have a proclamation because this is the week of the young child. So I'm going to read this proclamation on behalf of the board. Whereas the first years of a child's life are the period of the most rapid brain development and lay the foundation for all future learning. And whereas participation in high quality early education saves tax dollar, taxpayer dollars, makes working families more economically secure and prepares children to succeed in school, earn higher wages and live healthier lives. 
And whereas the Dubuque community's high quality early childhood educators ensure that children supported by families have the early experiences they need for a strong foundation. And whereas this week, the Dubuque Community School District celebrates strong early childhood programming and the important lifelong benefits that come from early learning. And whereas the Dubuque Community School District urges all members of our community to support efforts that increase children and family access to high quality early childhood education. Now therefore I, Kate Parks, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim April 6th through 12th as the week of the young child signed this eighth day of April, 2024. Good week. Yeah, love the busy week. Love the little yeah. young child, yeah. young learners. All right, that brings us to any board member or administrative issues. I, I do want to just start a conversation just to continue to just thank Amy and the leadership team here um, for many reasons. I, I don't think most residents get to see what really goes on in, in the weeds to make sure that this ship is running um, smoothly. We get a, a glimpse of that um, often. We get to interact with you often. We understand what's going on at the state level. Um, but the average Joe Schmo may not see that. And when they see us up here, they may think all of us are just like, yep, yep, whatever, <laughs> go along with it. Um, but we, again, get to interact with you on a deeper level to understand the challenges that we are facing um, moving ahead. Um, it's not easy right now, and I hope Everyone is paying attention to what's going on to public education throughout the state of Iowa. Uh, we have uh, more than ever an opportunity to lock arms and advocate on behalf of public education because if not us, then who, right? Um, and our kids uh, now and 10 years from now deserve better. And right now they are not getting it um, at that leadership level. But we are striving uh, with your leadership to, to build and reach out to our legislators, to partner with them, again, to do what's best uh, for the district. I know people may think, again, that all of us are just up here probably saying yes, but I tell you what, behind the scenes, there's seven different voices, seven different perspectives, and we all do not agree on everything. Uh, but we come up here unified because we believe in that common mission to do what's best on, bo on behalf of, of kids. And as a board, I'm, I'm proud of this board, and we have to continue to be forward thinking and figure out how to make this district more efficient. Again, not just for our kids, but the kids 10, 20 years from now. And so when we're building this system, we're thinking 10, 20 years, what's best for not just these kids, but those kids. So I just want to just publicly, again, I don't think we do it often enough to thank Amy and her team for all the work that you guys do behind the scenes to make sure that we are efficient. And our taxpayers need to know that we have the best of the best here in this district doing what's best. And I know many, if not all of us, think the same thing. So thank you. Thank the staff here. Thank the janitors. Thank the bus drivers. Everyone who gets to impact students. I know all of us, we are beyond grateful for you. And you guys deserve better. And I, and I hope our residents um, do what that young man said. Reach out to those legislators and know our, our district deserves better. Well said. Thank you for sharing that. Building on that, if I might, I, tonight is a sad night for me in, a, in board action that we took, necessary action. But in one vote tonight, this board greatly reduced one very important program and eliminated another from being used as it has been. And I'll, I'll just briefly explain. When we approved the consent agenda tonight, we in that was approved that 85 teacher leaders would be taken out of the teacher leadership program so that their funding, which is simply a small stipend and one or two days at most of additional contract, paid contract time, that was taken away, those positions eliminated, so that that funding could instead 
go to keep the lights on, essentially, not in terms of facilities, but in terms of meeting the costs and the expenses that our district incurs. So the teacher leadership program, I'll, I'll just tell you, it ex has existed for a number of years, doing tremendous work. It's being reduced for, of those 85 positions. Still some teacher leadership positions remain at this time. But those teachers not only continued the quality work that they're doing in their classrooms, but they also did special above and beyond leadership activities after school hours on their own time for which they received that small amount of funding, but combined by taking out those 85 positions, not as teachers, they were not removed from being teachers, but they were removed from that teacher leadership work and the funding that, that went with it so that that money could be scooped up and put to use to meet basic expenses. The second program is being eliminated altogether, and that's the teacher leadership grant, or the teacher leadership program. That program has existed to give additional funding to schools for professional learning. I'll tell you some of the, just a couple of examples of things that were done at the school level with that money. Professional book studies. Teachers would come together to read a book, study it, learn new techniques, new strategies for teaching and greater learning. The they, Teachers would come together to collaborate around student achievement so that they could analyze our student achievement data to make better decisions about teaching for our students. That money was also used to attend advanced professional learning to work in projects, for example, vertical alignment. In other words, to multiple grade levels to come together to work on the smooth transition from one grade level to another, on and on. There, there would be endless examples that could be shared. Why are those programs being either removed in the case of the teacher quality program for the money? We need the money in order to meet the needs of the, the district's costs. Not exorbitant costs. Mr. Kelleher spoke of efficiencies. This district has been working tirelessly to look at efficiencies and look for greater efficiencies in the way it uses the money that the public provides. This is an efficient district. Not that we can't ever find other efficiencies. But both of those programs, one reduced, the teacher leadership project and teacher quality eliminated. Not eliminated in terms of money, money taken from that use. So that money now will go to use for basic expenses of the district instead of those professional learning um, activities that it was being used for before. And I think the community needs to know when public education in a state is not given adequate funding, those are the kinds of, of things that have to happen in order to keep rolling financially. And we saw in one of Mr. Kelleher's slides during the budget hearing to look at that line graph and see that for 12 years, the funding that public education in the state of Iowa has been given has ranged from zero to 1% to several years of 2%. Now this year, three, two and a half percent, not the three percent we had hoped for. The translation of that is that when a decade plus, 12 years of inadequate funding happens, Superintendent Hawkins, her team, needs to bring to the board ways that we can take money from one place to give it to basic cost needs. And Tragically, we needed to approve that recommendation tonight. It was an appropriate uh, recommendation, but not one that we take lightly. And I think the community needs to know. That's how this district is trying to keep itself financially responsible, financially solvent, and functioning as good stewards. But in the process of a decisions like this, things go away the kinds of projects that we've been experiencing that helped our teachers grow and advance in their knowledge and preparation, those programs aren't there for those two cases. 
um, I don't know, Superintendent, I'm, please don't think I'm saying you shouldn't have brought those recommendations. We needed to have them. The alternative is to cut teachers. Yeah. Those were not teacher cuts. Those were additional, the additional funding that was given to those teacher leaders and to the schools for the special projects. We needed to do that. But how tragic that our state is putting public education in that situation. And I just want to name it, not seeking to be political at all, but seeking to say that's where we are. And as we watch things leave, it's a single motion took those things away from the work that they've been doing. So, and Nancy, to um, piggyback on that, those funds, that was a saving. What we approved was $2 million with those, those uh, taking away those um, teacher quality and the teacher leadership. Right. But now those funds can be put in the general fund so we can you. pay Lisa, the other bills because exactly right. they used to be specific. There's silos. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes. Some monies can be only used for specific projects and specific education or buildings, facilities. Now these monies can go in the general fund and it will help us to pay the teachers, increase, you know, we're getting some funding from that from the state to increase or to pay the increased costs that we're incurring. Thank you, so, Ms. Um, that's an important that's, clarification. You know, to I clarify for the public that. that those funds, now we can move them in the general fund and use them as needed without doing cutting teachers or closing schools right now. You know, I appreciate the comments tonight, both Anders and Nancy and Lisa. Um, whenever you're making efficiencies, that's not an easy decision to make. Um, and, you know, the one thing that we say over and over is we work really hard to do best by kids. And one thing that we've heard a lot from our staff, our classroom teachers, our, our principals, is we really want to make sure that we're not increasing class sizes to the point where it's making an effect on kids. Mm -hmm. And so some of these efficiencies that we've found due to us having the flexibility and the categorical funds to move some of those categorical funds to the general fund has really looked at what are ways that we can make some smaller changes mm -hmm. that will be leaving our full-time staff in those positions. So again, these positions that we're talking about People are not losing full-time no. jobs. Um, and the district is going to have to think differently and think outside the box of how we still do some of those same professional developments or those trainings or, um, you know, the things that the teacher leaders did in our buildings to be able to still have those experiences for our staff. And so those are things that we're working on right now to find different ways to do that work in a different way. Um, so I appreciate you stating that because, again, it's never hard, never easy to tell somebody that they're losing any money, even if it is, you know, two or $3,000. It's, it's, it's a hardship. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but just know that we're doing that to try to look out to make best decisions for our district and for our kids. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, board. I got so excited about um, the week of the young child that I forgot that we had a motion related to <laughs> the proclamation. I just jumped into proclamation, and we actually need to have a motion. I move that the Board of Education approve the proclamation recognizing the week of the young child and authorize the president and secretary to sign on behalf of the board. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the proclamation recognizing the week of the young child and authorize the president and secretary to sign on behalf of the board. Is there any discussion? Sorry for the mix-up. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And I already read the proclamation, so I'm not going to read it a second. <laughs> All right. Um, I believe that brings us to adjournment. So thank you all for a good discussion. See you thank next week.